There is a very popular saying in Jamaica that says the only things sure unto man are taxes and debt, but they forgot to add corrupt politicians and political scandals to the list. The reality is, in Jamaica, no better mackerel, no better barrel in relation to our politicians, as Cartel once said in a song. Two party but the same sad song, them a play. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Irrespective of which party is in power, you can rest assured that a political scandal is not far away. And while in opposition, that party is always quick to gain political mileage from these inevitable occurrences and promise to be a beacon of change when they win the next election. However, they being politicians and seemingly unable to help themselves, they fall in the same corruption they once lambasted their rivals for. The latest such scandal to rock a governing party is the current debacle that has engulfed Petrojam and Nessal, both state entities which fall under the science and technology portfolio, which up to recently was headed by Dr. Andrew Wheatley who has resigned. But why did it take so long for him to do so? And why did the Prime Minister take so long to put down the armor are very real questions. Andrew Olness was singing the song of accountability during his last campaign and vowed to stamp out political corruption should he be elected. Well, he was elected, but Mr. Olness has dropped the ball on those promises. This was Mr. Olness during his inauguration speech. I will ensure that government is coordinated and strategically directed. That decisions are taken quickly. That targets are set and met. And that the nation is informed. And that everyone under my appointment is held to account for their actions or lack thereof. And I always say that corruption is the flip side of inefficiency. Corruption will not be tolerated in this government. Now, when the Petrojam nightmare started to unravel, his tone and stance suddenly changed. The responsibility of the cabinet is to develop policy and report to parliament on policy. Uh, and I thought important today to report to the parliament on the fact-finding process that we have engaged. And we, we asked some specific questions there. We have gotten some answers. Those answers include issues that you have raised in terms of the viability of Petrojam and some decisions that need to be made. As I've said, we are now documenting our decisions and in short order, we will be saying to the public what it is that we will be doing, not just to address the shortcomings and weaknesses and the allegations of corruption, but what is necessary to ensure the viability of Petrojan. Mr. Holness himself, back in 2013, during a scandal involving Philip Powell, had this to say. We don't feel comfortable sitting in Parliament with a Minister of Government and that Minister shows no sign of wanting to resign or the Prime Minister showing no signs of moving to dismiss the Minister. It is a dark day for Jamaica where the Prime Minister is unwilling or afraid to act against a minister in which the public has lost total confidence and in which the institutions of the society are all agree that this person does not enjoy their trust or faith and has breached the confidence that the people have placed in them. I believe that this has the potential, if it continues, to bring down the entire government. So was Mr. Owenless now comfortable in sitting in the same parliament with a minister involved in a corruption scandal and not showing any signs of resigning? Instead of grabbing the bull by the horn, Mr. Owenless opted to remind Paul Well of his missteps. Member from Central Kingston and East Kingston and Port Royal said, I call for his resignation. Mr. Speaker, as leader of the opposition at the time, a major energy project went awry. Major. It wasn't just limited to energy. This was the electricity sector, the private sector company. Made, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Clear breaches of procurement guidelines. Hold on, man. Now, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister at the time did not relieve the minister of his portfolio. I just want to remind you of that. But yet, the minister maintained his title, maintained his staff, his office. 
So sometimes when we speak and I read some of the hypocrisy written in the papers, I just sit back and say, we have short memories. As a drama at Petra Jam and Nestle Deepen, the Prime Minister went to Parliament and did what politicians do, sweet talk. The situation that exists now is that we are in the process of discovering information so that we can take action. And I want to give the commitment that once we have discovered anything that suggests any form of corruption, the appropriate action will be taken. In the face of mounting pressure, Mr. Owens then resorted to the old political tit-for-tat game. What I have heard is this talk that there is ministerial overreach and association. Now, if association is the case, Mr. Speaker, many of you over here, including you, including you, member, could have been accused of having persons hired to entity, entities which were, which were related to you. I don't, we don't know that. That was never questioned. We never made an issue of it. We never go out and made an issue of that. And I am saying to you that mere association is not enough to convict and disqualify. I have to have more. Because if that were the case, you could have been convicted to member. Then more sweet talk and promises. The Cabinet of Jamaica hears and understands the concerns expressed in the public domain. The government is sensitive to the impact that allegations of corruption have on public confidence, as well as on the value, effectiveness and efficiency of Petrojam as a public entity. The government appreciates that in this age of social media and unfiltered information, the public needs to be constantly informed and assured of accurate information. The government is therefore even more constrained to ensure that it does its due diligence. The Cabinet Office is therefore now in the process of finalizing the documentation of the decisions that we have taken. And in short order, and in short order, very short order, I will inform the country of the specific actions that will be taken by the cabinet. Instead of firing Wheatley, the Prime Minister took away the science aspect of the portfolio but left the Minister with the technology aspect. The Minister, after weeks of calls for him to do so, decided to resign. But then, more sweet talk and promises from Mr. Olness. I will have to put through my cabinet and make it a standing practice that all members of the cabinet are exposed to good governance training and practices so that there is no misunderstanding of the roles so that we are thoroughly seized of what we need to do to ensure that we are able to fulfill the very mandate that we have set. This business of good governance and anti-corruption is a serious matter. It is a wave sweeping across the world and it is a wave that has swept out governments. I do not intend it to affect our government. Our government must be strong. Our government must stand visibly and demonstrably in support of transparency, of good governance, with a firm stance against corruption. Better late than never, some will say, but the Prime Minister missed a grand opportunity to be decisive or even pretend to appear that he was serious about fighting corruption. This video was made possible through the continued generosity of my patrons. To become a patron, follow the link in the description below. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here, Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.